Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Satisfactory. So, last episode we decided to build all this, move our house and everything, and we hunted a bunch of slugs to get a bunch of power crystals. In between episodes, I've gone ahead and reset up my concrete production, only producing 15 per minute, which isn't a lot, but it's okay. And uh, of course we have our rods, and we have plates, screws, and over there is our wires uh, that I also did in between episodes. I reset that back up. Uh, if you're curious, it's pretty much exactly how I had it set up before, uh, just more organized this time. Um, however, there is one slight issue, and that's uh, I, I, I'm trying to get cables put in, right? And I, I've noticed this before, especially with the stupid rock, which absolutely ruined everything. Um, I think definitely in the future, once we get a bigger backlog of resources, we're probably going to move all this again, only just because of things like this rock is in the way, and uh, it's 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 just really annoying, uh, because I'm, I'm someone who likes to try to make everything look nice and neat, especially in rows. But things that I can get rid of, like these trees, are, are preventing me from placing down constructors where I want them, right? And to fix that, we're going to need a chainsaw. Uh, now, chainsaws can be discovered through Tier 2 research in the Obstacle Clearing Milestone. The only issue is, is we're currently working on logistics. So, what I'm thinking is, is we're going to finish up the Logistics Mark 2 Milestone real quick. And then immediately go into chainsaws. So I'm going to go manually craft up the last bit of reinforced plates and grab the last bit of concrete and I'll be right back. Alrighty, so I'm going to come up here and smith that. And we're going to smack that button. Milestone reached. Improved versions of conveyor belts and conveyor lifts are now accessible. To encourage additional verticality, conveyor poles now have a stackable variant. All right, so now we've unlocked uh, MK2 conveyor belts, and if you remember from last time I talked about them, right, they're just like your normal conveyor belts, except they can move double the amount. So MK1s can move 60 items per minute, MK2s can move up to 120 items per minute, MK3s can do 270, etc, etc, right? MK2s are really nice, but they are pretty much useless to us until we get a reinforced iron plate uh, assembly line set up, which is kind of the goal of this episode. Um, but before we can do that, we're going to try to get this obstacle clearing uh, completed first. So I got to go collect some leaves to get the power back up. Alrighty, so we have the material that we need. So we're going to come up over here and boop, boop, and boop. Obstacle clearing, ready for launch. Milestone reached. Biofuel will ensure maximum efficiency of biomass burners. To aid in biofuel production, you are now capable of removing foliage that consists primarily of wood. Additionally, R&D inflated your pocket dimension. Alrighty, so we're gonna go ahead and craft ourselves a chainsaw. We need a bit more cable. Bit more screws. Should have plenty of. We can make some cable. And we can finally uh, go ahead and chop down those trees. Now, chainsaws, they operate on a different fuel. And that's solid biofuel. Solid biofuel is made from biomass, right? Biomass, wood, and leaves. And with that, you just make yourself a good amount of, of biofuel. I usually stick around 50. That's, that, that's enough to last for a little while. Um, and with that, I'll show you how to use chainsaw. Alrighty. So, we've gone ahead and made that chainsaw. Let this cool animation play. In the bottom left, you'll see our fuel indicator, right? This is uh, this all about fuel. All you gotta do is just come up, make sure it's going white. It'll, there you go, I need to hold down my foot. And this actually clears a, uh, a, a large area of, of, of greenery. And uh, we're going to go ahead and clear out the rest of these trees and stuff that's in here. 
This also helps in collecting uh, biomass for your early game pack. Are you? Come on. Oh, there we go. This also helps in collecting leaves and wood for your early game, you know, biomass generators for power. Um, another thing is, is if you see small rocks, like, um, every now and then, like, like these type of rocks on the ground, occasionally you can get lucky, and if you chainsaw a tree or a shrub or something like that right next to a rock, it'll make the rock disappear also. Um, I'm guessing because in the code, um, the chainsaw makes a certain uh, object type disappear, whether that be uh, what they classify as foliage or whatever, right? And there's certain rocks in this game that have the same object type. So that's that's at least my assumption. Um, unless if it is intentional, then I don't know. I'm not a video game developer, but those really help in quick if I'm So what we're going to do is go ahead and chop down some uh, trees and stuff, get some more biomass going, and with that, we're going to go ahead and make our cables uh, production line, and then we will get started on reinforced iron plates. Alrighty, so cables are being produced. Cable production is really simple early game, really. Uh, one furnace for 30 ore, right? Making 30 bars. The 30 bars each go into wire, uh, turning 15 bars into 30 wire. So 30 bars turn, uh, make 60 wire. Then the 60 wire can go into cable, where 60 are used per minute to make 30 cable per minute. It's as simple as that. So with that, you're going to have about 30 cable being made per minute. You got about 60 wire being made per minute, 120 screws being made per minute, 40 plates. And I think we're at, what's it, 15, 30, 60 rods per minute. And finally, 15 concrete per minute. Right now, our concrete is a little slow, which is a bit of a downside because all of your uh, structural construction is going to be concrete and and iron plates and eventually just concrete when you unlock concrete foundations solely right or it's not these type it's just concrete um so having a good concrete and a good iron plate production is a really good idea um getting that up soon uh ra sooner rather than later always helps out uh in the long term right or you could always just let your PC run overnight, turn off your monitor, and just let your resources build up. That also works. Um, but for that, you're going to, you know, not want to use biofuel generators because they can run out. You'll want to use something more uh, that can power itself and stuff like coal generators, right? Or any other future power source. But with that, so I'm going to go ahead and start planning out how and where I'm going to put my reinforced iron plate production and I'll be right back alrighty so here here's kind of the math which by the way I get this from a lovely lovely website um, called production planner uh, satisfactorycalculator.com right satisfactorycalculator.com um, very very useful it's very similar to uh, the oxygen not included calculator website except for it lets you plan out um, kind of for example you know five reinforced plates per minute will require all of this stuff to make that, right? And it really helps you kind of just plan it out. <clears throat> With that though, we're going to need 60 iron ore. That's going to uh, come up to make 15 rods, 60 screws, and uh, the rods are going to make the screws. Then we'll make 30 iron plates. Screws and iron plates come together in the assembler to make five reinforced plates per minute. And by the way, uh, to access this to-do list, all you got to do is just open up your inventory Move your cursor till you see the shadow, then left click. And you can kind of activate, um, you can kind of activate your public note, private note. If you're playing on a server, everyone can see public notes. Playing by, uh, if you want the notes to be private, you can put them in the private notes. But it's pretty useful uh, of a to-do list. I think you can even add in little like check boxes if you really want to do like a, as a proper to-do list, like 
do this research next. Do this next, etc., etc. Speaking of research, we should actually get our next milestone uh, set up for what we want to do. We're already halfway through tier two, and I think the resource sync bonus program is the one that sounds the most interesting to me. We're just gonna throw all the resources we have in there. Um, this will give us access to the awesome shop as well as the um, resource, the awesome sink, I think it's called. Um, base of the awesome shop is where you can use uh, in game tickets that are produced by the sink uh, to buy cosmetic and useful quality of life things, such as the ability to mount a uh, little, like just imagine a little top part of this pole on a wall, right? For the interior factories. Uh, and you know, the, that's where you get your concrete foundation, windows, stuff like that. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and make our big platform for what we're gonna need for the reinforced plates. And by the way, I'm gonna be using uh, these two iron nodes here. Let me Yeah, these two iron notes are gonna be used. They're both in pure, so they add up to 60. Uh, we're gonna be using that for our reinforced iron plate. So I'll be right back. So to start us off, right, we have two smelters, <clears throat> each with 30 iron bars, right? And we're gonna need 15 of these iron bars to go make rods for our 60 screws. And we need 45 to go ahead and make our plates. Well, the problem is we're gonna have 30 coming out of here and 30 coming out of here. So how are we gonna get 15 and 45? The answer is we're going to use a splitter and a merger, right? So 30 is going to come out here and it's going to split 15 that way and 15 out this way to where our iron rods want to go. 30 is going to come out here, it's going to be added up with 15, and then we're going to output 45. It's as simple as that, right? And uh, if you ever are in a situation where you want to do like two thirds of something, right? Because these splitters split, th split things in half or in thirds, right? You can either split things um into one thirds by having all three outputs out uh, activated or in half by only having it go out of two outputs right so if you want to split things into two thirds what you can do is have yourself a um like a okay yeah, 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 sorry, sorry. so you're gonna want to have yourself like splitter right so it's going to input to the splitter and then right after it you want to have yourself a merger so then you can have, let's say, for example, you want 40 to go in one direction and 20 to go in another, and you have an input of 60. So 60 is going to come in here, uh, and then it's going to split into, right, you want you want two of the thirds to go one way and one third to go this way. So you can have um, 20 going this way, 20 going this way, and then you have this come around and do 20 as well. So now you'll have 20, 20, and 20 which means 20 is going by itself and 40 is going over here, right? That's just a quick tip on how to do uh, splitting things into two thirds. It's uh, pretty useful in my opinion, uh, especially when you start getting into more complicated construction uh, and things have to start splitting in weird, weird uh, fractions in ways. But from here, we're gonna do our constructor, right? So we're gonna do production constructor and of course we are out of reinforced iron plates. Alrighty, so first things first, we're gonna do our rods to screws. Right. I'm gonna go ahead and throw our constructor. Uh, no, let's put it here. Because that's gonna have to split and everything eventually too, so. So 15's gonna come out here. We're gonna go ahead and make our rod. Then from our 15 rods, we're gonna go ahead and put this into Mm. Here's fun. It's two different constructors. Uh, hmm. So we're, we're actually not working with a lot of room here. And because of that, actually, what we're going to do is try to condense this as much as possible. All right? So. So let's 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 extend ourselves out one more. Uh, 
And we're gonna go ahead. Okay, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So we're gonna put this close. Is it, it, it can be close. Rods. And then we're gonna bring our constructor. And we're gonna put one constructor. Here. And here. And we're gonna do logistics. Get our splitter. Now this is gonna split half and half, right? Which technically is not 100% efficient, right? Because we're using one and a half constructors here. And by the way, to set something in half, just come down here from 100%, set it to 50%. So we're gonna be producing uh, 20 screws here, 40 screws here, it's gonna be 16, 60. I am an idiot. <laughs> it's 60. We can split them 30 and 30. Yeah. And then that would be evenly in half. So you can come to your output per minute and just set that bad boy to 30. So we can do 75, 75. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So. 75, 75, that'll split them evenly, and that should keep it 100% efficiency. Then you're going to take your output here, and we are going to merge them. Hmm, that is very good. There we go. And our output's going to be here. We have our screws and rods. Alright, so that half is finished. So then we're going to come over here, make ourselves another constructor. One, uh, two, so we need one and a half, which means we're going to need to split this. Which means this guy is actually going to need to go a little further up. About here. We're going to start as a conveyor splitter. Input to output. Okay, so we're going to have 40 iron uh, bars come in here. So we're going to make this. So the output is 20 for 30. 50% uh, will make this 15 per minute. So 75%, I think. I think if we do 75, 75 again, it should be evenly split. But we'll have to give it some input and some power to, to find out. All right, so then that's going to be our iron rods. We're going to merge these two together. Just like so. And then we're going to go ahead and get our assembler ready. And of course, I need some reinforce iron plates for that because I always seem to need the thing that I'm trying to create an assembly line to make very silly but I'm gonna go ahead and put this guy say hmm I'm above both Actually, if we do it, no. Yeah, no. Okay, we're gonna. Um, I'm gonna put it there. I think that's fine. It keeps this line straight. And we are out of concrete. And it'll make the other one a 90 degree angle. It'll look nice. I was trying to. Get it pushed back a bit because we're gonna have to put in our storage container for the reinforced iron plates but i think we should still have a bit of room for it one two okay and then this guy's gonna make reinforced iron plates grab our storage container Put 
that bad boy right there and plug that in. All right, now all we gotta do is just uh, power everything up and uh, get it attached to our, sorry about that. Uh, um, and then get it attached to our miners up there. So I'll be right back. Alrighty, so my wiring is a bit of a mess, but here it is. We have our two smelters, our 60 iron ore. We got our 15 rods, 60 screws. We have our 40 plates, um, 30 iron plates, sorry. And uh, that's all going into here. Uh, and so our assembler making five reinforced plates per minute. Uh, real quickly, just make sure. 15 and 15, yeah. yeah. So our iron ore should be coming in soon. We had to build another um, biomass burner. We're now up to uh, four normal ones and the two that are on the back of our ship. Which, by the way, the two on the back of the, sh uh, of the hub actually produce less power. That's only 20. All these produce 30. So just keep aware of that. Don't don't count those two as 30 as well. Um, we should start seeing ore coming in. Yep, there we go. There's our 60 ore. It should start uh, slowly but surely with our absolutely sloth mode MK1 conveyor belts get put in. Now, when it comes to conveyor belts, especially when you get further in the game, it's really up to you on if you want to just make all conveyor belts the fastest they can be, or you can use a mixed match of conveyor belts. I, I personally like to do both, right? Um, it really doesn't matter to me. It just depends on if I want it to be cheaper or more expensive. For example, right, we only need 60 ore to go on this conveyor belt. So there's really no issue with using an MK1, even though it's slow, because it's still, no matter what, going to deliver all the resources we need. It doesn't matter what speed, because they're going to still get there per minute, right? Um, and then if you had something that's going to, like the screws, for example, uh, we should probably upgrade that line to an MK2 so we can deliver 120 screws per minute, since we are producing... Um, for a 120 screws per minute. So all of these output conveyor belts should be in K2s. But we can still keep all these ones over here as MK1s because we're not moving 120 rods on it, right? Or more, at least more than 60. So it, it, it's really up to you um, on how, why, oh why are we breaking? 170. Oh, 160. Well, my power math was off. We are, in fact, going to need a another biomass burner. I'm going to unplug that bad boy. Plug in in. And plug that in. There we go. And then this one can take... I need more, I need more biomass. But while that is running, there we go. So we now have the screws entering, we have the plates entering, and it should. Oh uh, well, we have to be patient with it. It may take a second before it gets up to 100% efficiency, um, just because we had a bit of a power outage and you gotta wait for some machines to prime and stuff, but. We should see, yep, 12 of 6 here, and this should get up to 24, 23, 24, yep, just in time. So, this is working at 100% efficiency, um, as long as, you know, we keep our power running. And we should start collecting about 5 reinforced plates per minute. Alrighty, well, I think that that's a pretty good place to stop this episode. Um, next episode, we're probably going to finish up Tier 2 and get rotors being constructed. And probably start thinking about where we want to put a more permanent factory. Uh, it doesn't have to be a big mega factory, but just a factory, a, a, a general factory for kind of our basic resources here. And, and figuring out where on the map we want to put that. All right, we haven't explored the map that much, and we still have a, a lot to do. We also have a bunch of resources sitting back at our old base that we still need to go collect as well. So with that, that's the end of today's episode. And uh, I hope, you know, those of you who didn't know were able to learn some things. And I hope for those of you who do know, 
were able to enjoy uh, at least some wonderful, uh, at, at least some constructive idea uh, ideas, right? Um, my channel is growing really well, and I really appreciate everyone who's who's spending the time watching it and and such. What would really help is obviously if you could like and subscribe the video. Um, if not, you know, just watching the video also helps. It's 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 really nice to see people engaging with the videos and watching them. And all I ask is um, is you know, come check out the next episode if you can. Um. With that, I hope you all have a nice day, alright? Bye-bye.